This is video 59 in our series, Electrical Circuit Analysis. A uh, reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, in this video, we want to start off with a, um, again, a relatively uh, really simple circuit, which looks like this. And then we're going to, I say it looks like this, we have resistor, 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 and a coil over here. And again, just a, uh, a battery of 48 volts. What we're going to do is close the switch and then ask ourselves what will be the current that flows through this conductor. Now the way the uh, circuit is right now, here we have 12 plus 8 is 20 plus 4 is 24 ohms and the battery is 48 volts so right now there's two amps of current that goes throughout the, uh, the circuit. And now let's close the switch here. So it's like this. Now when we do that, the current coming from the battery will go through the 4 ohm resistor. Then it's just going to short circuit right back to the battery. Which means that where the coil is, there's no longer any current to uh, supply this. Well, let's consider now what happens immediately after we close this switch. Just at that instant of time, the current in the coil will be 2 amps. But of course, it's not going to stay like that. It, it's going to fall off. When it falls off, um, the magnetic field that was in the coil, that collapses, and that induces a induced voltage of this polarity. And again, we've discussed this in more details, more detail in the other videos. Um, but there is a current that flows around like this. It starts off with a magnitude of 2 amps, and it falls off to 0. And I think it was in um, video number 56, we derived the equation for this decay current. And what it is, what it would be, say, for this particular um, circuit right here, I equals what it was immediately after the switch was closed, that's 2 amps, times E to the minus R over L multiplied by the time. And for this decay circuit, the total resistance is 8 plus 12, that's 20 ohms. So we have 20 divided by 1.2. I think that's the same thing as 50 divided by 3. So the decay current that loops around like this, that would be 2 times E to the minus 50 over 3 times T. T, of course, is the time. So that's our decay current. Now what about over here? This looks pretty simple. This would just be 48 divided by 4. That's 12. And we wanted to know what is the current in this conductor. We'll call that I1. So well, there's 12 amps going into here. Then there's the decay current going in the opposite direction. So you would think, well, that should be pretty simple then. I1 would just equal 12 minus this decay current. And that would be the solution. And indeed, this is the correct solution. But the way that we have thought of it is that it consists of this current minus this current. That's true, but it's not the most fundamental way to think of the problem. And if we don't consider this in the most fundamental way, if we have a circuit that's just a little bit more complicated, we might get the wrong answer. And to demonstrate that, let's suppose we have the exact same circuit, except there's going to be another switch over here. So let's just redraw it. Exactly the same um, 
circuit, except we're going to have another switch going down here. We're going to ask the same question. When both switches are closed, what will be this current? So let's just first of all redraw it real fast. So we have the battery. A 4 ohm resistor. And there's an 8 ohm resistor. A 12 ohm resistor. And then the coil. That's 1.2 Henry's, 12 ohms, 8 ohms, 4 ohms, oops, and a 48 volt battery. Then we have a switch here and a switch here. Initially, both of these are open. So again, there's a current going through here of 2 amps. And then, say at time t equals 0, we're going to close both of these at the same time. So now, it's like this. So again, the current from the battery goes through this resistor and it's going to sh go right through this conductor and return to the battery. Here there will be a decay current as there was before. There will be an induced voltage from the collapsing magnetic field of this polarity. And now the decay current goes like this, right straight through this conductor through this resistor. So now the decay current for this particular circuit is going to be, again it starts off with a value of 2 amps, that doesn't change, don't need the A in there. Then we have E to the minus R over L multiplied by the time. R is 12 ohms, this is 1.2, so 12 divided by 1.2 is 10, so a decay current is 2 times e to the minus 10 times t. Then over here, we would just again have 48 divided by 4, 12 amps. So you'd be tempted to think, okay, so I1 is just 12 amps. There's nothing to subtract off from it. But no, that's not the correct way of thinking of it. The correct way of thinking about this is, here's a battery, so the battery puts out a supply current that is equal to 12 amps. But in this single circuit, this 12 amps consist of the I1 plus the IL current over here. I out just goes all the way around like this. So we have 12 equals I1 plus that decay current, which is this. Or I1 equals 12 minus the decay current. And that's what this is. So again, up here, it may have seemed obvious in this simpler circuit that I1 is going to be 12 minus the decay current because they're, both, they're going through the same conductor in the opposite direction. That's true. But if you go down to this circuit, you'd be tempted to think that I1 is just 12 amps. No, that's not true. And again, the reason is that here we think of the 12 amps as a supply current, and it's going to consist of this current plus whatever current is over here. So again, I1 is going to equal 12 minus whatever currents there are in that circuit. 
The only other current there is that is this decay current. So again, I1 equals 12 minus the decay current. Now, what we're going to do in the next video is consider just a slightly more complicated uh, scenario. We'll have the same circuit and we'll have these same two switches initially being open. Then what we'll do at time uh, t equals zero, we'll close this one. Then at a later time, say one tenth of a second later, we'll close this one. Then we'll ask ourselves, what's the current that goes through this conductor? So it's going to be a slightly more complicated problem. So come back, join us for that video. We'll solve this more complicated problem, and let's see what kind of an answer that gives us.